My name is Maxime Schreier. I'm a writer and an academic. I live in Boston, and I'm speaking to you now from the village of South Chatham in Massachusetts on Cape Cod. It's April 16th, 2020. My family and I have been living here for about a month in uh, self-isolation. It's a very strange experience, uh, and uh, I'm beginning to envy my own characters. I used to think that I, as their creator, had the advantage of controlling their destinies, uh, but now I feel like uh, they have the privilege of living their happy scripted lives, whereas we are all living through this uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic, and uh, I'm not entirely sure how all of this is going to play out, uh, hoping for the best. And uh, I'd like to share with you a short excerpt from my most recent book, A Russian Immigrant, Three Novellas. Uh, I'm going to read from the opening novella, which is called Bohemian Spring. And uh, it's a play on both the Bohemian lifestyle and Bohemia as uh, the historic uh, Czech lands. And uh, in this novella, my immigrant protagonist, whose name is uh, Simeon Reznikov, Simon Reznikov now in America, he's a young scholar. He's researching the biography of an elusive Jewish Czech writer who is very famous for his works, but about whom very little is known. And he travels uh, to Prague and he spends uh, over a month, uh, almost two months actually, in the Czech Republic. Uh, this is the time soon after the Velvet Revolution and the Velvet Divorce. Simon is drawn to Bohemia not only because he wants to research this biography and eventually write a book about this writer, but also because he feels that uh, this gets him closer to his homeland, to Russia. He hesitates. Uh, he is not too comfortable about uh, going back to Russia, but uh, being in a Slavic land, he uh, feels a bit more at home and a bit closer to his uh, former homeland. And so um, while living in Prague, he meets a young Czech woman by the name of Milena. They develop strong feelings for each other. And in this uh, episode, Simon thinks that he is about to change his life uh, and Milena's as well. So I'm gonna read from the novella Bohemian Spring from my book. Russian immigrant three novellas. Walking from Clementinum towards the Charles Bridge, Simon thought of how soothing it felt to be an anonymous person in a seething city crowd. His plane was leaving Saturday morning and Friday was their last day together in Prague. His original plan had been to do some souvenir shopping and find a present for his mother, perhaps a locally made scarf or shawl or a pair of earrings with Czech garnets. Instead, without fully knowing what he was doing, he hopped on the tram. From his stop, he ran up the hill all the way to Vitek and Irenka's house. This is a house where he is renting a room. He borrowed Vitek's portable console, its slatten body reminding him of uh, his own father's old typewriter. Kneeling in front of the only chair in the room, Simon machine gunned the text of an invitation. Simon Reznikov, 516 Whitney Avenue, apartment two, New Haven, Connecticut, 06511 USA, the Czech consulate, Prague, Czech Republic. It is my pleasure to invite Ms. Milena Krupichkova, citizen of Czechoslovakia, to visit me in the United States of America during June-August 1993. Ms. Krupichkova is a close friend of mine and the purpose of her visit will be tourism. Throughout the duration of Ms. Krupichkova's stay in the United States, I will take care of her accommodations and, if necessary, provide her with financial and health care assistance. I'm a U.S. citizen and would be grateful if the U.S. consulate acted favorably 
and promptly on Ms. Krupichkova's request for a U.S. visa. Sincerely, Simon Reznik. He released the guide and rotated the platen knob clockwise until most of the sheet was out of the typewriter's grip. He then proofread the invitation, rotated the knob in the opposite direction, and typed the letter R over the word Czechoslovakia, crossing it out as well as he could. He rotated the knob just a touch and typed the Czech Republic above the blacked out name of the country which the land of his birth caressed with tanks and jack boots in 1968, just as he was learning to walk in the streets of Moscow. He smiled like a blind jazz pianist, rolled the page off the platen, folded it, and placed it in an airmail envelope. It was the only envelope he had in his room, and he wrote Milena Krupichkova Prague on it, thinking of the lonesome boy in Chekhov's story who inscribed the envelope with the tremulous words, two grandpas at the village. Taking some money from a stash he kept in his toiletry kit, Simon headed down to the tram stop. He bought a bunch of wa waxy tulips from a flower girl. Should I just ask Milena to marry me right here on the spot, Simon thought as he walked past the interchangeable hippies strumming their guitars on the bridge. Just take my grandmother's old ring off my pinky and give it to her, he reasoned with an imaginary double who was called Shoma. For some reason, Simon was convinced that Milena would say yes, but his Russian double, was he also sure? When Simon and Milena came out of the bar holding glasses of white wine, Simon noticed Frantik, Milena's ex-boyfriend, watching them from a bookshop across the street. By the time they had found two empty chairs on the sidewalk and pulled them together, the jealous musician was gone. Silently, they sipped their wine, the rims of their hands joining and coming apart like blades of grass in the wind. Breaking the silence, Simon asked, Milena, I wanted to ask you something. Ask me, Milena said, lowering her angled chin onto her left shoulder. Would you like to come and stay with me this summer? In America? Yes, in America, in New Haven, to be precise. But first, you would fly to New York. The Kennedy Airport? Like in spy novels? Milena asked, exactly. And then we'll drive to New Haven and I'll take you around and show you New England. We can visit my folks in Boston, see Cape Cod and the ocean. There's lots to do. Will you have time for me? Simon hesitated, then reached for his breast pocket and removed the airmail envelope he had prepared for her. I didn't have another kind, he said. This is for me? Milena asked. I've typed up an invitation. You will need to take it to the American Embassy in Prague. Here, open it. Milena slowly read the invitation, her lips, her lips mouthing some of the words. She blushed, then composed herself and said, trying to find the right English words, Simon, you surprised me. May I please think about it? They crossed to the other side, holding hands. The Vultava, swollen with the spring torrents, carried urban detritus under the arches of the bridge. There are 16 of them, Simon remembered. Milena telling him the first time they walked together across the Charles Bridge, yelping and thrashing. A Maltese was trying to rip its leash from the hands of its owner, an old lady wearing a mauve hat with flowers, small dogs, big tempers. Simon wanted to quote one of his father's aphorisms, but hesitated. He thought of his parents in Boston, of his father's, of, uh, he thought of his parents in Boston, of the daily Russian phone calls, and he felt a double pang of sadness, which Russian immigrants sometimes feel when traveling in Europe. And uh, I'm going to stop here and tell you that uh, 
Milena does not end up uh, accepting Simon's invitation, which probably breaks his heart, but probably also gives him back his uh, ticket, returns to him his ticket to then still the wide open American future. And I also just want to say that in this story, there's a lot of travel across boundaries of states, uh, uh, across the world. And uh, um, of course, we now all long for the time when we will be able to resume traveling and living our normal lives. Uh, and I wish you all, uh, above all, health. Please stay well. And thank you very much.